Thank you, Mr. Talabani, for accepting to talk to us Thank today. Thank you, my pleasure. There have been a lot of political de developments in uh, Iraq and Iraqi Kurdistan over the past one year. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start with the national elections in May this year. It took forever to come to an agreement and elect uh, a president who would then give the mandate to the prime minister. Why did it take so long? I think that if you look um, over all the last few elections we've had, it's always taken a long time. There's a lot of different groups jockeying for different positions and lots of deals that have to be made and, and um, partnerships to be formed. Um, I didn't think it took a particularly long time, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But there were negotiations happening behind the scenes between your party, uh, the, Patri uh, the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan, yes. and the Kurdistan Democratic Party. Yes, there were. Okay, and there seemed to be disagreements along the way. There were a little disagreement along the way, um, but not perhaps as, as big a disagreement as being shown in the media. Um, we think there wasn't really enough time to make a decision. Um, we used to have a strategic alliance with the KDP, and the strategic alliance was that the KDP would have, or one of the parties would have the regional president, and in return, the other party would have the president in Baghdad. Um, this became complicated because the position of president in the north has been put on hold. As the, that position has been put on hold, the powers of the president have been spread among the prime minister and certain other places in parliament. Um, so it seemed difficult for us as the PUK to have both presidents in effect with the KDP. So what we wanted to do was make some kind of arrangement where... Uh, Dr. Barham, the PUK candidate, was the candidate of the Kurds as a whole. Unfortunately, um, there didn't seem to be enough time to manage these negotiations with the KDP. So what happened was both parties ended up going into Baghdad with two different candidates. Um, this saddened me a great deal, actually, to be honest with you, um, because I would have preferred the Kurds to have made their own decisions before going to Baghdad. But at the end of the day, this is what's happened. Um, it was a political situation that had to be resolved. Mm -hmm. So what is the situation now between the two parties? The situation w between the two parties, I think, is not so difficult to overcome. Um, there's been issues between the KDP and the PUK for a few years now. And to be fair, a lot of those issues are caused more by the PUK than the KDP. The PUK has had problems internally since uh, Mam Jalal became sick and then sadly passed away. Um, the PUK had lots of issues amongst itself, issues of confidence, issues of direction, issues of unity. Um, and because of this, it's been very difficult to make concrete and strategic deals with the KDP, with Goran. Um, and to be fair, a lot of that has been our fault. But now a more unified and cohesive PUK is able, I think, now to make the appropriate agreements and alliances with all the political parties that it needs to do. So the Kurdish region recently also had its own election yes. on the 30th of September. Yes. It's been three weeks <coughs> since that election, and we still don't have the final official announcement of the results. Why is it taking so long? Some people are saying there is negotiations between the KDP and the PUK going on. Is that true? How are these negotiations going? Will we have soon a Kurdish government? I think we will have soon a Kurdish government. Um, what's happened is the election's gone ahead and there are complaints from many different parties about certain irregularities. So it's up to the Commission and, if necessary, the Court to look at this and make a final decision. Um, I don't think it's taking a particularly long time and what I'm aware of is that in the next few days the results will be made. And once the results are made it's easier then for the PUK to make its offic official position known. I think it's difficult for the PUK to give an official decision now. 
Mm -hmm. And do you think then the negotiation process for the formation of the government would be difficult because of the situation be between the KDP and the PUK? There is a reality in Kurdistan. And the reality of, in Kurdistan is whenever the Kurds have been united, especially the PUK and the KDP, the financial, the security, the political situation has always been calmer and better. And I think all sides realize this. And I think this new unified PUK is in a better position to make a concrete deal with all the Kurdish parties necessary mm -hmm. to move Kurdistan forwards to the next stage. And I think all sides realize this. And I'm hoping that with everybody putting their sensible hats on, and sitting to make real and concrete negotiations and everybody willing to make certain sacrifices, I'm hoping that we can have a very strong government mm -hmm. and we can start working on all of the issues that we need to work on. The financial crisis, the um, disputed territories, our relationship with Baghdad, etc, etc. Mm -hmm. I'm optimistic. Mm -hmm. But I'm genetically optimistic, I'm a Taliban. What is your relationship or the relationship of the PUK with the other uh, smaller parties in uh, the Kurdish region? I think the relationship is good. Um, with uh, Mr. Ali Bapir and Komal, the relationship has always been good. Um, with Yegirtu, Yegirtu are a fine party with some very, very intelligent members. Um, Goran is a part of the PUK. Uh, they may not like me saying this, but the only solution I think for Goran is to, for Goran to come back into the PUK mm -hmm. or to make some kind of unity. Because I think, apart from each other, we will never get what we really want to achieve. And coming back to the KDP, the KDP have to be the strategic partners of the PUK going forwards, I believe. Um, I believe that the relationship with the KDP can be strengthened. I think we can go forwards with them. And I really hope that we're on the brink of another huge leap forward for Kurdistan. Mm -hmm. um, well, another issue that seems to cause a lot of disagreement between the two major Kurdish parties is Kirkuk. Yes. Uh, currently, the governor there, who was appointed by Baghdad, uh, he has been elected to parliament. So oh. there needs to be a new governor. So now, from what I understand, there is negotiations and even a competition for who will take that governorship. What is your position on this? Where are the negotiations going? Will this be resolved soon as well? Um, I don't think that's necessarily fair that there's a competition for the governorship. Um, what I'd like to see happen is for the PUK and the KDP to sit down together and work through these issues. I think with one voice, will be much stronger in our position to influence things in Kirkuk and in Baghdad. And in fact, we've already reached out to the KDP. Um, when our A team was in Baghdad for government formation, um, the first person we called was um, the KDP delegation and offered to sit together and help each other get the ministries we want. And the same thing has happened regarding Kirkuk. We've reached out to the KDP and said, look, we wish to have a, a meeting of all parties where we can sit down and discuss Kirkuk and the best way to move forward. Again, I really want to stress unity, unity, unity. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we can do that, if we can get past the other issues that are holding us back, I think that we can, we can really move Kurdistan forwards in the next four years. And what are these other issues? What are you talking about? What is kind of the biggest problem, let's say, between the KDP and the PUK? Honestly, the biggest problem, I think, is the bad experiences of, of the past. Mm -hmm. of, of deals and uh, contracts and negotiations that haven't been fulfilled. And you'll speak to most people and they'll say, they did it and we did it. I think the reality of the situation is both parties are responsible. Both parties have made errors. Mm -hmm. Both parties have made mistakes in the past. And as I stressed, the PUK had its own internal problems. It was perhaps not in a situation to move forwards strongly and bravely and, and do the deals that it needed to do to make Kurdistan flourish. Uh, but I really think that time has passed. The PUK hasn't been this united since before uh, Mam Jalal got sick. 
-hmm. So I'm optimistic for the region. I'm optimistic for Kurdistan. I'm optimistic for our partnership with the KDP. Um, the friendships in the PUK and the KDP are very, very deep. Some of the people I most respect politically and as people are members of the KDP. People like Nechirvan Barzani, uh, obviously Kak Masoud himself, Kak Masroor, etc., etc. So I think that the situation isn't that bad as perhaps being portrayed. It's just going to take bravery and people willing to make sacrifices uh, to get where we want to be. Mm -hmm. And there's also one more issue concerning Kirkuk that seems to be causing a lot of trouble, and that is the pumping of oil from uh, the Kirkuk oil fields through uh, the Kurdistan pipeline. Are there negotiations right now uh, going on between the KRG and Baghdad on this issue? Uh, I couldn't actually answer you on this one mm -hmm. with any kind of authority or information. Um, it's not something I'm dealing with, and to uh, be honest with you, not something I want to deal with. But I'd be very surprised if somebody wasn't talking to somebody about how this pipeline is going to be. Mm -hmm. Well, talking about oil, over the past year there have been quite a few deals made with a newcomer on the scene here in uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, and that's Rosneft. Yes. Um, the Russian company. Yes. Um, one of the deals was including, you know, um, the takeover of the Kurdish, uh, the Kurdistan pipeline by Rosneft. Mm. What do you think about these deals? Are these deals in the interest of the KRG? Are they good for the region? And do you think that they should go forward? Because they're cur currently being disputed by Baghdad. I would be very surprised if the KRG did things after all this investigation and communication that wasn't good for the KRG. Uh, whether Baghdad sees it as good for the KRG, I can't really speak for. Um, again, the only way to get past this is for Baghdad and KRG to sit down together and see what areas are disputed and why there are disputes, and I'm sure they can meet in the middle somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one of the major debates that has been going on um, over the past few months um, in Iraq is international involvement in, in the country. There have been protests in the south of uh, the country, specifically uh, Basra. Um, they went as far as attacking the Iranian consulate there. Mm. There seems to be anger, at least in certain quarters in Iraq, about Iranian influence or interference in the affairs of the country. How do you see that? I think Iraq is a very important regional country and it's unrealistic to expect any country, be it the United States, to be it mm -hmm. Iran, because you know everybody's been hearing this election has been Iran versus the United States. It's unrealistic to expect other countries not to want to influence this situation. But the solution is very simple. Mm -hmm. I think the Iraqi political parties and the Iraqi people have to simply do what's best for Iraq and not get involved in external struggles or external squabbles. The solution is for the Iraqi people to look at Iraq and think, look, what's good for Iraq? And I think that's the best way forward to proceed. You're known to have relations, good relations with both Iran and the US. Yes. Um, what are your relations like right now under the Trump administration with the US? And how do you see US presence, continuing US presence in Iraq? I'd like to think our relations are very good with the United States of America. They've been a strategic ally with, for us uh, for many, many years now um, in the fight against terrorism, etc., etc. Uh, I'd like to see the relationship get stronger. I'd like to see a U.S. presence here for many, many years to come. Um, and um, I think we have some trips planned soon to the United States and things will become clearer then. But everybody that we're in contact with here, Brett McGurk, um, the ambassador, the general consul, relationship has been very, very good. There's been trying times, of course, the issue with the referendum strained things a little. But I think in general, we have a very good relationship with the United States and it's something we wish to keep. But the Trump administration is also right now building a coalition here in the region, an anti-Iran coalition. Um, let's say, attracting a number of countries and un a number of political forces here to join that coalition against Iran. 
Where does the PUK stand on this? I think the PUK really has no desire to become involved in regional conflicts. We have enough financial security and stability issues in Kurdistan. Uh, we share a very long border with Iran. We have a long relationship with Iran, going back many, many years. And many times Iran has helped us, many times Iran has hindered us. I think it's unrealistic to expect the PUK or any other Kurdish party mm -hmm. or any other Iraqi party to cut ties and political relationship with Iran. The reality of the situation is we have hundreds of kilometers of borders with Iran. The majority of trade in the Soleimani region is with Iran. Mm -hmm. And um, a thousand years from now, these borders will probably still be the same. You are yourself a military man. How do you see um, the security situation going forward? Do you think ISIL will come back? Um, do you think it has been defeated for now? And what needs to be done? Uh, I think the ISIL military threat is definitely not what it was. But... Um, we're expecting and are seeing a move towards more asymmetrical warfare. At the same time, I think in some of the disputed areas, notably Kirkuk, the, situa the security situation is not good. I think the forces that are in Kirkuk are not familiar with the area, not familiar with the locals, and um, this needs to be addressed very, very quickly. We need some kind of joint force from Kirkuk looking after Kirkuk and Kirkukis, and this force should be comprised of Turkmen's, Arabs, Christians, Kurds, everybody should be there. Um, I think we really do need that because we are starting to see an escalation of issues in and around Kirkuk. So this is one area that really needs to be addressed quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, given all this instability and, let's say, the possibility of an ISIL comeback, mm -hmm. don't you think that the Kurdish forces should be united? that there should be one unified armed force here in the Kurdish region. And why is this not happening? I'd love to see that happen. Okay, but why is it not happening? Why is it not happening? I think we're slowly moving in that direction. But every time we have some kind of political setback, uh, I think if you want the honest truth, I think people are afraid. People are afraid of something new, and it's a huge change for Kurdistan. But I really would like to see that. I would like to see one united Kurdish security apparatus, mm -hmm. military apparatus, uh, etc. And I think we can move towards that. And I think it will help the political process here. It will help normalize Kurdistan. Mm -hmm. It will change the dynamic of the region, I think, for the better. Mm -hmm. It's something I wish to try to work on in the next four years. Mm -hmm. Well, this year it's 20 years since the end of the civil war between um, the two Kurdish parties. Yes. Um, the Washington Agreement was signed in 1998. I have talked to some people who have expressed worry about the fact that both of the parties are quite well armed. Very well today. armed. Correct. Is there a risk? at some point, that the tensions that there are right now between the KDP and the PUK could escalate into an armed conflict? Over my dead body and over the dead body of many, many Kurds. That's just not something that will happen. Mm -hmm. I think nobody is willing to do that anymore. Those days are long gone. We're still paying the price of that internal conflict. Kurds will not, should not, and absolutely must not be allowed to kill Kurds. If we need to be able to resolve our issues politically, mm -hmm. we need to be able to sit down and, and, and get to the root of the problem and dialogue with each other. Mm -hmm. Again, these two political parties have known each other for decades. Um, we have friends in each, each of the parties and there's absolutely no reason for that to happen. I think it would be an absolute disaster. A disaster for Kurdistan, a disaster for both parties, a disaster for Iraq and for the Middle East. I think this is the absolute doomsday scenario that every Kurd with a single brain cell will do everything in their power to make this never, never happen.
if, let's say, the, the security situation uh, stays stable, then there's the economic and financial situation, yes. which has been getting worse. You mentioned that in the beginning. Um, recently, there was an incident in the Mediterranean Sea. A boat sank with migrants and refugees. A dozen Kurds died. Yes. Your people continue to flee the region. I know. And yet the region is also very oil rich. Do you think that the political elite, the Kurdish political elite, has failed its people? I think to say it's failed its people is perhaps a little harsh. But if we're very honest with each other, we could have all done better. Saddam hasn't been in Kurdistan for decades now. When I look at the Kurdistan, I think the situation with electricity still isn't as good as it should be. The situation with sewage still isn't good as it should be. The situation with roads and infrastructure still isn't as good as it should be. But some of that also is down to the curse of oil, where Kurdistan is a very mineral-rich country. Kurdistan could be very, very strong agriculturally. We could have uh, tech centers and factories. But what's happened is the price of oil was so high, everything was concentrated on oil, and everything mm -hmm. else was kind of pushed to the side. I think with newer and stronger agreements with Baghdad, um, with a different unity amongst the Kurdish parties, I think there's no reason why we can't get back to where we were a few years ago. And a few years ago, actually, what was happening was the opposite. Kurds in Europe and in the rest of the world were coming back to Kurdistan. And this is where I'd like to get to again with my partners in the KDP and in Goran and in Komal and in Yakgurtu, etc. Mm -hmm. And I think we can get back there. One of the criticisms that I have heard in Baghdad, in Erbil, here in Soleimaniye, um, is that politics in Iraq in general has become a family business. What do you respond to that? I think that um, you could make that argument. You could make that argument to a lesser degree in the United States. You could make that argument in many, many countries. Um, I think that nobody in any family should be in a position of power just because they are in that family and they're in that position of power. But on the opposite of that, I don't think someone should be held back from politics if they are working in the party and are doing well and are trying to improve the situation, a family name shouldn't be held against them. I think it's a difficult balance, but I think, to be fair, if you look at the Middle East as a whole, it's not unique to Iraq, this. Mm -hmm. And in this sense, then, do you support the calls for this next um, government of Iraq to be technocratic? I think that the government of Iraq needs a mixture of everybody. We need some technocrats, but we also need some strong political figures that can hold everything together. Mm -hmm. This is, after all, Iraq, and um, it has its unique set of problems and its difficulties. It's in a very interesting neighborhood. Um, it has a very, very interesting financial makeup, uh, ethnic makeup, religious makeup, mm -hmm. and I think a, a a government purely of technocrats um, perhaps would be better off with some strong political figures inside it that can maybe hold things together and guide things in certain directions. Mm -hmm. That would be what I would like to see happen. And does the PUK have specific posts within the cabinet? You know, is it after specific posts within that cabinet? No. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. I think the PUK has always been a part of the solution mm -hmm. for problems in Iraq. And we want to get back to being there. We want to be a part of the solution, not be a part of the problem. I would like the PUK to work more with Baghdad, increase its presence in Baghdad, ideally side by side with the other Kurdish parties. Because if you look at our seats in Parliament, we're so strong in Baghdad if we're united. So this is what I would like to see happen. Mm -hmm. And I think hopefully it will happen. Mm -hmm. So then is the future of the Kurdish region within the borders of Iraq or is independence out of question? I don't think independence is out of the question. 
Um, and I don't think that um, it's an issue that even needs addressing now. Mm -hmm. We have so many current problems, we have so many issues that we need to overcome. Um, we need to be part of Iraq. The strength of the region from now, for us, is through Baghdad. And I think that every Kurd wants an independent Kurdistan. But the reality of the situation is um, this cannot happen unilaterally. Baghdad, some of the surrounding countries have to agree to this. And we have to make movements towards that very carefully in a considered diplomatic manner. I think some of the mistakes of the past shouldn't be repeated because if anything, they will set the Kurdish cause back. Mm -hmm. And finally, what are your personal ambitions? Where do you see yourself? Do you see taking leadership of the party? Do you see yourself staying a military man? Where do you see yourself in the future? I'd like to see a unified PUK. Now, for me, frankly, who's in charge is not important. But I'd like to see a unified, strong PUK with the other Kurdish parties side by side, moving Kurdistan forwards. I'd like to see um, many different policies implemented for the good of the people, certain anti-corruption policies. We need to change the way we hold our elections. We need to move forwards together with all the parties. My personal ambitions are that. And I think a strong united PUK makes everybody's life a lot easier. And I really do believe that we are on the brink of making Kurdistan stand up again mm -hmm. and be strong financially, secure. Uh, I'm really hoping that we can do this, but we can't do this alone. The PUK can't do this alone. The KDP can't do this alone. We have to do this together. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your interview. Thank you.